Solomon's temple must have been the most glorious and awesome building that most people who saw it will ever have seen. It would have towered above Jerusalem with a beauty and craftsmanship that sadly today we can now only imagine. But there are some aspects of the splendour of the temple which are maybe more accessible to us still. For instance, somebody's worked out that they used 27 tonnes of pure gold in the construction of the temple. That means that you'd have a material cost in gold alone of over £12 billion in today's prices. I mean, wow. But why? Why all the effort and the expense? Well, because the temple was the house of God. And all the hard work, the magnificent, everything that went into building it was actually simply an act of worship, a response from the people of God to the presence of God in their midst. Actually, when I say that the temple was the house of God, I I mean it very literally. House of the Lord is the most common description of the temple in the Old Testament. It and the house of God are used almost four times as often as the word for temple itself. And that points us to the fact that actually this was the core and key reality of what the temple was all about. It was the place of God's presence. And all all the other things that it was the centre of national life, the the centre of religious life, or, or the place where the sacrificial system was based, all of those things are secondary, flowing from this, this key reality that here God dwelt with his people. Now, that didn't mean that they thought that that this was the only place that God could be or that somehow the temple contained him. In fact, quite the opposite. King Solomon, when he was praying at the dedication of the temple, said this. The heavens, even the highest heavens, cannot contain you. How much less this temple that I have built. And yet somehow the temple was the place where God's presence was most fully made real here on earth. This was the house of God where he dwelt with his people. And actually, that whole thing had been God's idea from the outset. The origins of the temple lie way back in in Exodus with instructions that God gave to Moses for the building of a tabernacle, or literally a dwelling place. Now, that first tabernacle was was a tent. But while the the materials and the permanence and the grandeur of the thing might seem quite different from the temple that we read about later on, it was theologically the same place. It was a dwelling place for God, the house of the Lord. And its point was that God was there in the midst of his people. We see as much in uh, Exodus chapter 29, where God explains it to Moses. He says, I will consecrate the tent of meeting and the altar and will consecrate Aaron and his sons to serve me as priests. Then I will dwell among the Israelites and be their God. They will know that I am the Lord their God who brought them out of Egypt so that I might dwell amongst them. I am the Lord their God. It's an extraordinary thought, actually, that he says in those verses that this was the whole reason why he brought them up out of Egypt. This is why he has chosen them to be his people, so that he might dwell in their midst and make his presence known here on earth through and to them. That means, if you stop and think about it, that actually the defining feature of the people of God is the presence of God. This is what makes us God's people. And it's really important as well that this was God's initiative all along, that it is God who saves the Israelites, who brings them up out of Egypt, and that it is God who teaches them and tells them to build this tabernacle and then says, I will dwell in your midst. And actually those verses in Exodus 29 are in the midst of a whole series of chapters in which God gives very detailed instructions for the building of the tabernacle explaining things such as its layout and and what's to go inside it, even actually at times who is to make what piece of temple furniture. That's all a reminder that 
that this isn't what people so often think it is. The temple, that the faith of the Israelites and the Christian faith is not about us trying to somehow blindly make our way to God. It's not about us going to him at all. It's all about God coming to us. And the temple is the great manifestation of that. God's idea built on God's plan and blueprint so that God could choose to dwell amongst his people. And you might have noticed that in those verses from Exodus 29, everything was in the first person. God saying, I will consecrate the temple and I will dwell in the midst of the people. And the high point of Exodus, that the end of the book is when uh, the, the temple is dedicated and suddenly the glory of the Lord in a cloud fills and overwhelms the tabernacle. This is the place of the presence of God. And it teaches and reminds us that actually the people of God are defined by the presence of God. And that might all seem uh, sort of for then and for there, because obviously we no longer have a physical temple. But it points us like a, a vast visual illustration to some central truths for us as Christians as well. Because the same dynamic is at play. Because in Jesus, God has come to us and made his dwelling in our midst. In fact, that's exactly how John describes it in John 1 verse 14. The word Jesus became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. And the Greek word there is the equivalent of the Hebrew word for tabernacle. This is the fulfillment of the Old Testament temple or tabernacle. And that then continues as Jesus returns to heaven, he pours out his Holy Spirit on us, the church, as we'll see in a few weeks time. And we can know and experience God's presence with us. Not because of anything we've done to achieve it, but because God has come to us. And so as I finish this first part on the temple, I want to pray that God would do that for you and for me, that he would come by his Holy Spirit and fill us afresh. So Lord God, we, we thank you for this amazing gift and promise of your presence with us. And so we respond by saying, yes, please. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.